Warning. This video contains flashing lights which may not be suitable for photosensitive epilepsy. Welcome to a journey shrouded in mystery and enchantment. In today's exploration, we'll peel back the layers of history and venture into the intriguing origins of witchcraft. Witchcraft, often associated with magic, the supernatural, and the occult, has a lineage that stretches back through the annals of time, into the very heart of humanity's earliest civilizations. Witches, often associated with magic, the occult, and the supernatural, have a long and complex history that spans cultures and centuries. The concept of witches has evolved over time, from healers and herbalists to the stereotypical image of a malevolent sorceress. Our quest begins in the cradle of civilization itself, Mesopotamia. Here, among the fertile plains of the Tigris and Euphrates, the roots of witchcraft took hold. These ancient peoples believed in the power of spells, incantations, and the connection between the earthly and the ethereal. The earliest witch-like figures were often revered as healers, wise women, and shamans. Moving down the sands of time to ancient Egypt, we uncover a tapestry of mysticism. In the land of pharaohs, magic was woven into everyday life, from medicine to religion. Priestesses and magicians held esteemed positions with their incantations and spells etched into scrolls and hieroglyphics. Their practices were considered sacred and integral to the Egyptian way of life. But as we delve deeper into the origins of witchcraft, we'll discover that its history is as diverse as the cultures that embraced it. Our voyage will span continents and epochs, unfurling a mesmerizing tapestry of enchantment that will guide us through the mystical realms of Native America's lush forests, the ancient enigmas concealed within Europe's shadowy woods, Greece's mythic landscapes, the colossal legacy of the Roman Empire, the mystic heart of Mesopotamia, the enigmatic sands of Egypt, Albania's captivating folklore, the ancient sagas of Northern Europe, the mystical heart of Persia, and China's arcane enclaves. As we journey through the annals of history, it becomes evident that the concept of witchcraft transcends geographical boundaries and epochs. It evolves, it adapts, and it endures. Our tale begins in Mesopotamia, where clay tablets dating back to 2000 BCE contain incantations and rituals. The cradle of civilization, Mesopotamia, harbored a rich tradition of magical practices. Magicians and priests held the knowledge of powerful spells and incantations to divine the future, ward off evil spirits, and cure ailments. These early witches were often called upon to heal the sick and guide communities. Rituals played a significant role in these practices, as did the use of protective amulets. In ancient Persia, Zoroastrianism was the predominant religion. Magic and ritual were deeply intertwined with this faith, and Zoroastrian priests possessed extensive knowledge of esoteric practices. These rituals aimed to maintain balance between the forces of good and evil, and they often involved intricate ceremonies and offerings to the divine. Witchcraft in China finds its origins in the shamanic practices of ancient times. These early shamans, known as Wu or Wu Ji, were believed to have the ability to communicate with spirits, both benevolent and malevolent. They played a crucial role in their communities, performing rituals to ensure good harvests, healing the sick, and protecting against evil spirits. Chinese witchcraft encompasses a wide range of practices, including divination, spellcasting, and healing. Practitioners often used herbs, amulets, talismans, and other tools in their craft. Divination methods, such as I Ching, Jing, were commonly employed to seek guidance from the spiritual realm. Across ancient China, alchemy and Taoism were influential. Alchemical practices sought to unlock the secrets of immortality, using elixirs and meditation techniques to achieve spiritual enlightenment. Taoism, too, incorporated magical elements in its quest for harmony with the Tao, or the natural way of the universe. These ancient civilizations each had their unique approaches to magic and spirituality, reflecting the diverse beliefs and cultures that flourished in their time. In ancient Egypt, magic was woven into daily life. While they didn't have witches as we envision them today, there were individuals who held special knowledge of magical and mystical practices. The ancient Egyptians referred to magic as Heka, a concept that encompassed both supernatural power and the practice of harnessing it through rituals, words, and actions. At the heart of this mystical realm were the priestly magicians. 
Priests and priestesses practiced divination, potion making, and spell casting. Some like the famous Cleopatra, were believed to possess extraordinary mystical powers. A cornerstone of Egyptian magical belief was the Book of the Dead, known as the Book of Going Forth by Day, a compilation of spells and instructions designed to guide the deceased through the treacherous journey of the afterlife. These spells were considered essential for ensuring a successful transition into the realm of Osiris, the god of the afterlife. Symbols held incredible power, the Ankh symbolized life, and the Eye of Horus represented protection. Deities held immense sway in Egyptian magic. The goddess Isis, for instance, was associated with healing magic, while Thoth, the god of wisdom and knowledge, encompassed magical wisdom in his domain. Rituals and ceremonies conducted by priests honored the gods and sought their blessings. Magical tools like wands, staffs, and ritual implements were wielded by practitioners during their ceremonies and spells, further attesting to the depth of their mystical arts. They even dabbled in necromancy, communicating with the deceased to gain wisdom and guidance. Matters of the heart weren't left untouched either, with love spells and fertility rites being part of their enchanting repertoire. In sum, while ancient Egypt may not have had witches in the modern sense, it boasted a rich tradition of magic and mystical practices that were interwoven with the culture and spirituality of this ancient civilization. Our journey through the tapestry of time takes us to ancient Greece and Rome. Here, we meet figures like Medea and Circe, renowned for their magical prowess. Witches were both revered and feared, their powers intertwined with myth. In the realm of ancient Greek witchcraft and magic, one prominent figure stands out, Hecate. She was revered as the goddess of magic, witchcraft, and the crossroads. Hecate's presence was invoked in a variety of rituals and ceremonies, particularly during the Hellenistic period. It was believed that she could guide individuals through the liminal spaces between the physical and spiritual worlds. Hecate had three sides, the young maiden, the caring mother, and the wise crone. They stood for different parts of life and the moon. The Hellenistic era brought forth a rich tapestry of magical practices. Greeks of this time embraced a range of magical traditions that included spellcasting, the use of amulets, curses, and divination. These practices were not confined to a specific class or group, rather, they permeated society. People would turn to magic for various purposes, from seeking protection to achieving personal goals. Beyond the more commonplace magical practices, ancient Greece also witnessed the rise of philosophical and mystical movements like Orphism and Pythagoreanism. These traditions held esoteric knowledge and mystical practices at their core. They emphasized the importance of the soul's purification through rituals, incantations, and adherence to a specific way of life. Romans, like Greeks, practiced various forms of magic. This included divination, the use of amulets, charms, and spells. Magic was often used for practical purposes, such as healing, protection, or ensuring success in various endeavors. Practitioners of magic were known as magi or magicians. Romans consulted oracles and practiced augury, interpreting the flight patterns of birds. Additionally, the concept of the lares and penates involved household spirits that were revered and propitiated through rituals and offerings. Moreover, there existed a body of magical literature during the Roman Empire, including texts known as magical papyri. These texts contained instructions for performing various magical rituals, spells, and incantations. Some of these texts were influenced by Egyptian and Greek magical traditions. In addition, the term, malefica, was used in Roman law to refer to a female practitioner of harmful magic, which was often equated with witchcraft. Accusations of malefice, engaging in harmful sorcery, curses, and love potions were not uncommon. The Roman legal system occasionally dealt with cases related to witchcraft. The Roman Empire was vast and diverse, encompassing a wide range of cultures and beliefs. As a result, there was no single, unified perspective on magic and witches. Instead, Roman society was characterized by pluralism, where various religious practices and magical traditions coexisted. Our path now takes us to the ancient lands of the Balkans, where hidden within the rugged terrain are tales of magic and enchantment. 
The Balkans, a crossroads of cultures and traditions, have a rich tapestry of mystical beliefs that span centuries. Here, the line between folklore and reality blurs, as witches were often seen as protectors and healers. Witchcraft, or Vrazara in Serbian, Vratsiai in Romanian, and similar terms in other Balkan languages, was often practiced by women known as Vrazaris or Vrazark. These women were believed to possess knowledge of both benevolent and malevolent magic. As we cross into Albania, we uncover a unique blend of mystical practices deeply rooted in the land and its history. Albanian witches, known as mild Tizorid or Melisnesses, were revered for their ability to communicate with the spirit world and harness the power of plants and herbs. These herbalists and seers held a revered place in Albanian society, offering guidance and remedies to those in need. In Albanian folklore and mythology, the Vetitima or Zana were revered as beings with the power to communicate with the spirit world and harness the forces of nature. These beings are somewhat similar to witches in other cultures, but there are also distinct characteristics that set them apart. The term Vetitima can be translated to self-flyer or self-throne. These beings are believed to possess the power of self-propelled flight, which they use for various purposes, including traveling to hidden gatherings or covens, where they engage in magical activities and rituals. Vetitima are often depicted as women who have made pacts with dark forces to gain their supernatural abilities. Zana, on the other hand, are supernatural beings in Albanian folklore that are generally associated with the fairy folk rather than witches. They are typically seen as beautiful and benevolent female spirits who inhabit the natural world, particularly forests and bodies of water. Zana are known for their enchanting songs, and they are sometimes seen as protectors of the environment. While they are not explicitly associated with witchcraft, their mystical qualities make them important figures in Albanian folklore. In Northern and Western European traditions, particularly in regions such as Scandinavia, Germany, the British Isles, Ireland, France, and others, belief in witches predates the arrival of Christianity. In Ireland, the concept of witches was influenced by a rich tapestry of pre-Christian pagan beliefs. Ancient Celtic traditions, for example, included druids who were seen as keepers of wisdom and knowledge, including herbalism and rituals. Ireland's folklore also featured tales of supernatural beings and entities, sometimes resembling witches in their magical abilities. In France, beliefs in witches were intertwined with folk traditions and superstitions. The French countryside abounded with stories of cunning folk and wise women, who were known for their knowledge of herbs, healing practices, and divination. These individuals were often respected members of their communities. In Norse and Germanic mythology, there were figures associated with magic and the supernatural, such as the Norse the, the practitioners. These individuals had a complex role in society, as they could be both revered and feared. As Christianity spread across Northern and Western Europe, attitudes toward witches changed. Witches came to be associated with devil worship and malevolence. The witch hunts of the early modern period, especially in the 16th and 17th centuries, led to the persecution and execution of many individuals, primarily women, accused of practicing witchcraft. Now, let's cross the Atlantic and venture into the enchanting world of the heart of the Americas, where Native American cultures have flourished for millennia. Here, the concept of the witch takes on a different form, a shape-shifting, nature-bound conjurer, often known as a skinwalker. These mystical beings are said to possess the power to transform into animals, bridging the realms of humanity and the wild. The traditions of Native American witchcraft vary greatly among tribes, but one thing remains constant, the profound connection with the land, the spirits, and the elements. Many Native American cultures have spiritual leaders, often called shamans or medicine men and women, who play a vital role in their communities. These individuals are not considered witches in the Western sense but are seen as intermediaries between the spiritual and physical worlds. They use their knowledge of herbs, rituals, and ceremonies to heal and guide their communities. But as history unfolds, we encounter a darker chapter, the European witch hunts of the 16th and 17th centuries. Thousands were accused of witchcraft, primarily women. Superstition and fear ran rampant. The infamous Malleus Maleficarum or Hammer of Witches, a treatise on witchcraft, fueled paranoia. It outlined the methods of identifying and prosecuting witches, 
leading to horrific trials and executions. In the Bible, whispers of witches have enchanted and spooked readers for ages. From the chilling decree, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, to the spellbinding narrative of King Saul's fateful meeting with the Witch of Endor, these verses have cast a mystical spell on our imaginations. In Deuteronomy 18, we find a list of forbidden practices, including divination, sorcery, witchcraft, and communicating with the dead. These ancient scriptures provide a glimpse into the religious laws of the time and the complex history of witches in biblical law. Turning the pages of the Quran, we encounter a different perspective on magic. While the Quran doesn't mention witches explicitly, it condemns the practice of magic as a form of deception and disobedience to God's will. In Surah al-Baqarah, 2-102, we learn of Solomon's era, where devils taught magic, leading to the timeless message that magic is a trial and should be avoided. The Quran offers Surah al-Falak, 113, and Surah Anas, 114, chapters dedicated to seeking protection from various forms of evil, including magic. These chapters are recited for divine refuge from malevolent forces. In Islam, magic, sorcery, and any form of supernatural practices that go against the teachings of Islam are generally discouraged and considered sinful. The Quran emphasizes the importance of faith, prayer, and reliance on God as a means of protection against such influences. Yet, the legacy of witches endures. In the 20th century, we witnessed a revival of witchcraft, notably with the emergence of Wicca. This modern form of witchcraft emphasizes nature worship, ethics, and the use of magic for positive purposes. In the 21st century, witchcraft is experiencing a resurgence. It has transformed into a multifaceted movement that incorporates self-care, spirituality, and feminism. Witches today continue to explore ancient practices in new and empowering ways. Our exploration of witchcraft's origins has unveiled a rich tapestry of history, stretching from the earliest civilizations to the present day. It's a story of healers, mystics, and trailblazers who have shaped the course of human history. As we conclude this chapter, remember that the origins of witchcraft are not confined to the past but are woven into the fabric of our present. Witchcraft, with its enchanting history, remains a source of inspiration and empowerment for many. As we bid adieu to this captivating voyage, let us carry forth the knowledge and wonder we've uncovered, embracing the myriad forms of witchcraft as part of the rich tapestry of our world's history and culture. May our spirits remain forever curious and enchanted, and may the ancient whispers of witches continue to echo in the chambers of our hearts. And hey, if you're craving even more thrills, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit that like button, and share this video with your fellow explorers of the mystical. The more, the merrier. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay fearless, stay curious, and may your encounters with the supernatural be delightfully dreadful. <laughs>